A story about love. Part 3. Marriage. Marriage is the next logical step for two people who have bonded. Are both looking for a long-term commitment and believe the other is a good match for them. The word love comes into play long before marriage, but up until the day we say, I do. Love has little to do with holding a relationship together. At least, the real kind of love doesn't, the mature kind. The kind of love that has nothing to do with butterflies in your stomach. Or excitement for the future. In truth, the English language is missing a word. Something to fill in the space between lust, infatuation and love. Because that missing word and the confusion between it and love is the first bullet for marriage. The natural emotional progression of a relationship, as most of us understand it, is this. 1. Attraction, lust. 2. Infatuation. 3. Love. The actual emotional progression of a relationship involves an emotion that gets confused with love and even gets labeled as love. It is an emotion that we accept as love but is actually quite different. The reason for this confusion is our false concept of what love is. Many couples choose to get married based on a false idea of what love is. They make a lifelong decision based on an emotion. That causes their bodies to produce hormones that make them feel good. They call that emotion love and thereby believe that they must marry the person they love. But that feeling is really just infatuation. Mixed with knowledge gained about the other person over time. Sometimes mixed with a touch of acceptance. This emotion is what disappears when we say, the honeymoon period is over. In relationships that are built on a strong, honest foundation, that emotion will fade, and love will become the primary force in the marriage. But in relationships that have weak foundations, the lack of that emotion causes discontent and irritation to erupt. And often, even love is not enough to maintain all of the lies and deceit the relationship was built on. So what then, is love? The best way to think of love is to separate the feeling from the action. We often say, I love you, to people we care about. And we also say, I love puppies. I love chocolate. Or, I love to play on the beach. The emotion of love is a feeling. It can be described as happy, giddy, safe, content, joyful. Or a dozen other pronouns. We can feel love for people, pets, things, causes, or anything else that makes us happy. Love as an action is what keeps people together. To love someone means to actively care for them. To do for them in order to support them in being healthy and feeling loved. The feeling of love without action is useless to anyone but the person feeling it. But the feeling is usually what couples refer to when they say. I love you so much I want to marry you. What is really meant is. You make me feel so good I want to keep you around me all the time. But what happens when the good feeling is gone? If a relationship is built on lies, the good feelings will fade quickly. When the couple no longer has anywhere forward to go with the relationship. And marriage is as far as we can go. Many relationships change after marriage because the chase is over. The decision is made, and reality sets in. No more excitement, no more fear of losing your partner. No more need to wear the mask. The toilet seat gets left up, the toothpaste is a mess on the counter. No one wants to cook dinner. And neither partner is interested in watching another movie they aren't in the mood for. Resentment and a feeling of being duped replace the good feeling, and the marriage is over. If the marriage is built on trust and honesty, the good feelings will cease. Because there are fewer surprises under the hood of the shiny new marriage. But the good feeling will eventually end anyway. And be replaced with the ho-hum lack of emotion that comes with living day-to-day -day life. The excitement wears off and is replaced with. A natural acceptance of the warm body living with you. 
This is the scenario that requires an understanding of both sides of love. The feeling and the doing. We can dodge the bullet by understanding that. Eventually, this love we feel will become work. The goosebumps will fade. And we will have to put effort into maintaining a healthy relationship. We need to understand that loving someone enough to marry them means we will continue to love them as an action even when the feeling of love is replaced with boredom, irritation, aggravation, disappointment, and anger. The choice to love someone until death do us part is a choice to not stop the action in the absence of the feeling. It is a choice that says, I want you to feel loved even when I am angry with you. This choice is even more important when children are involved. Marrying someone with children involves a multiple commitment. Loving and cherishing the children is just as important as loving and cherishing the spouse. We will visit Olivia and Noah again. And follow both scenarios from the previous encounter through to marriage. In scenario 1, both Olivia and Noah maintain much of the personas they started with throughout their dating relationship. Noah continues to attempt to maintain the illusion that he is a neat person. But it is exhausting for him, and he has built a little resentment toward Olivia because of it. Olivia is close to finishing her degree and is feeling distress regarding her career choice. She is hesitant to pursue her dream of becoming a psychologist. Because she feels Noah will not respect her decision and is instead looking into business psychoanalytics. Because of this, she is building resentment toward Noah. They are living together, still really enjoy being together, and share many interests. But their daily conversations are often dull or irritating. No events about work, which Olivia doesn't understand. And Olivia loves to talk about theater, which Noah really has no interest in. Olivia expects Noah to be available more than his work schedule allows. And Noah expects that Olivia will support his career because he believes she shares the same passion. In this simplified scenario, it is already easy to see how their relationship is strained. They still feel in love and have a desire to spend their lives together. But the foundation is already cracked. When Noah proposes to Olivia, she says yes, and they are both relieved. They both have the impression that their love must be strong enough for them to make it forever. And that marriage will seal the deal. After the wedding and honeymoon, they are happy for months. Noah is again happy to clean up after himself. And Olivia shows a real interest in his work. They are so filled with the feeling of love, that the actions come easy. But, after a year, or two, they each start to slip, and the masks start to fall away again. Both are surprised by characteristics or feelings the other has that they never knew about. Communication becomes strained, and resentment builds. The good feeling is gone, and they each start wondering what happened. They believe they no longer love the other, and that they are not loved. The second scenario between Noah and Olivia is similar. But there is more support and encouragement. Still, after moving in together, they become somewhat bored. Olivia often wishes that Noah didn't work such long hours. And Noah isn't into the theater as much as Olivia. And gets tired of her talking about it. Olivia gets irritated at how messy Noah can be. And Noah gets irritated when he feels that Olivia is using him as a psychological test subject. The difference is that they aren't surprised, and they build less resentment. When Noah proposes to Olivia and she says yes, they are both thrilled and excited for their futures. They feel that they know each other well and accept the other as they are. After the wedding and honeymoon, they are again riding the emotional high of being in love. And their relationship grows even stronger. But after a few years, when Noah is working even longer hours, and Olivia is trying to build her career, the good feeling is gone and is replaced with boredom. The little resentments that have built start to feel overwhelming. 
and neither feels the love from the other they are used to. They lash out at each other because they feel hurt. And arguments start to become a regular thing. They both begin to wonder if it is over, if the other still loves them. So what happens next? Like, share, comment. Subscribe to Total Transformation Channel.